the National Conference on Medical Imaging with Deep Learning. Uh, just a few housekeeping things first. Um, so fire exits. So in the unlikely event of an emergency, there are six fire exits. Two at the front, two behind you, and two at the top. <laughs> uh, I hope you will not need them urgently. If you do for other reasons, there are toilets on this floor and also two floors down. I think two floors down is the more uh, regular uh, restrooms if you, if you need those. Um, in, in case of an emergency, the meeting point is the Queen's Lawn. Uh, so that's the grass pitch outside. Uh, so you just go down immediately outside of the building, uh, close to the big tower. Hard, hard to miss. All right, so we are in the UK. We have to talk about the weather. Uh, so we start by doing this. Um, so it, it, it looks good. Um, I guess in the UK, this is what we would call a heat wave. Um, <laughs> So it should be fine today, uh, which is important because there is a welcome drinks reception and a barbecue outside later. Uh, it will be hopefully beautiful tomorrow. There might be a bit of rain on Wednesday. We will be recording this event. So uh, actually this is now uh, hopefully probably currently live streamed on YouTube. If you want to tell anyone about this, uh, just search for Middle Society on YouTube and you will find the, uh, the links. It will also be offline available. So after the event, you can actually look up all the uh, oral sessions and keynotes. Um, probably important for some of you, you can access the Wi-Fi either via Eduroam, if you're with an academic institution, or otherwise just search for the cloud, which is the free Wi-Fi uh, here at Imperial. If you want to tweet or uh, do any sort of social media sharing about the event, please use that hashtag. We'll try to retweet everything. I just want to uh, uh, reiterate, so we have the code of conduct. Uh, everyone who is in this room has agreed uh, to confirm to the code of conduct. You can look it up on our website. It's basically just saying be, be nice to, to each other, uh, which I think is what we anyhow want to do. So you might wonder, where, where, where am I? Right? So many of you might be here for the first time, but many of you might be also be here for the first time at middle, because it's only the second time that we're doing this. So where, where are you? So you are right in the middle between medical imaging and deep learning, right? <laughs> so in case you wondered how to say, is it MIDL or what? So it's, it's middle, okay? Uh, you're also roughly in the middle of London. So this is the uh, Imperial College South Kensington campus. You see the Queen's Tower uh, in the middle. Uh, so that's approximately where you are at the moment in Sherfield building. This is the Great Hall. Uh, it's our largest uh, lecture uh, theater at Imperial College. And you will see everything is very close by. So the gala dinner is just five minutes walk from here. Uh, many of you have booked on-site accommodation in, in Bait Hall or East Side. Uh, so that's also just uh, two minutes away, as you might have noticed this morning, which I think is very nice. Um, OK, so about the conference. Um, if, if you have any problems, any questions, either come to the registration desk or try to find people with a green shirt. Uh, so I can see a few here, but if you find someone with a green shirt, they will at least tell you uh, who to ask uh, and how to solve your problems, if you have any. Hopefully not too many. Uh, so this is a sold-out conference. Uh, we were excited to be uh, sold out already, I think, two or three weeks ago, and then we had to uh, operate with a waiting list. Um, this was exciting on one hand, but also, of course, a little bit challenging on the organizational side, because I guess there were a few people disappointed not getting any tickets but at least they can watch the live stream. Um, when, when we did middle, so obviously this is uh, the, the second time and people who have attended the last year's conference in Amsterdam probably got excited about uh, how middle was run, which is really a, a new type of event which tries to uh, be community-based and tries to really bring together everyone who's interested in that field, but also be very inclusive, try to be open and, and as accessible to students uh, and, and, and everyone who wants to talk about uh, medical imaging with deep learning. So, so we tried very hard to actually bring a conference to central London, which is affordable. And, and I think we were quite proud at the end that we managed to have an early, early bird student rate, which included three days accommodation on site for about 500 pounds for a three-day full, uh, full three uh, conference. Uh, which is exciting. We, we see there about a third of uh, uh, registered people are actually students or PhD level and below. This all wouldn't have been possible, obviously, without our great sponsors. So big, big thanks. Um, maybe a round of applause to our, our sponsors. Thank you.
because you can imagine it, it, it does cost a little bit of money to bring a, a conference to, uh, uh, to, to London. So thanks, thanks, for the, uh, thanks to our sponsors. Uh, a few of them will be in the exhibition space and you have a chance to talk to them. They have a little demo set up. Um, just a few words about the, the conference. So, uh, I'm Ben, one of the organizers. Um, there's Tom and George. We, we tried to have this crazy idea almost a year ago at Middle Amsterdam where we, where we accepted to say, um, let's bring that to London. Uh, obviously, we needed a larger team, so we were very grateful about our great program chairs who, who basically brought the content to the conference, which is important, and our social and keynote chairs, um, and many, many other people. Now, when you start a conference, you might have not planned for everything. And um, I guess it's, it's interesting to see what happens during those 12 months. Uh, in particular, there were a few babies born within the organizational team. Uh, so this is uh, my own daughter, Lucy, and Ingrid from OSA. And just a few days ago, uh, George added uh, someone here. And you will see that our program chairs are not here, because one of them just got a baby. The other one is actually expecting a baby, and that's the photo. <laughs> He sent, uh, so someone is expecting a baby to arrive just next week. Uh, so a lot of unplanned, or maybe planned things happen, but things that you have to somehow accommodate when you start organizing an event like this. So that's where you are, the Great Hall. That's our main venue where all the plenary session happens. Then uh, you probably already saw Queen's Tower Rooms. Here's a picture where it's empty. Now it's full, full of posters, full of catering, full of exhibition. Uh, and that's a great place where we want to have all the social interactions during the three days. The drinks reception will be there, uh, and there will be lots of opportunities to uh, talk and interact. So this is the, uh, the floor map, so you see the entrance to the Great Hall there. Uh, there's six companies uh, exhibiting here, and also the fire exits. It's very obvious, it's just the big glass doors that go out to uh, the Queen's Lawn. All right, so tonight uh, there will be the welcome drinks and barbecue. This will just be transitioned from the poster session. So the poster session in the afternoon will just, you will see suddenly there will be drinks appearing and, and people will start to relax. And, um, and hopefully around six, um, the barbecue will be served outside, hopefully. If you fancy, tomorrow morning, very early, 7 a.m., there is a park run plant in Hyde Park, beautiful Hyde Park. It's just five minutes from here. So uh, it's, it's, it's a pretty nice area. Um, you should have a look around if you, if you have time. Go to Hyde Park either tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Um, if you want to join, talk to us at the registration desk. And it's about, I think it's a five kilometer run they are, they are planning, so it should be fine. <clears throat> then tomorrow we have um, another highlight evening. We are having the gala dinner in the V&A Museum. It's a beautiful place. Also just five minutes walk from here. Um, and we start at uh, 6.45 is the entrance. And it will be a long night, uh, hopefully. All right, so, so we will have coffee breaks every morning, 8.30. You can already arrive early if you want. Um, the conference from tomorrow on starts at 9. So at 8.30, you can grab a coffee in the, in the poster uh, area and exhibition space. Uh, at 11, we have another break. There will be also some pastry served and then another coffee break in, or tea in, uh, in the evening. Lunch is between 1 and 2.30. If, you, if you're still wondering, this is all included in the conference. So there will be lunch served and everything. OK, so this uh, is, is uh, an overview and a warm welcome from our side. We want to now give you a few details about how we came up with the program, what's the, what's the content about. And this is then done by Tom. Thanks. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, well, thanks, Ben, for the first introductory notes. Um, I'm here on behalf, really, of the program chairs. Uh, as you saw, there were lots of babies, but also some visa issues and so on. So I'm standing in uh, for them. Um, middle is, is, is trying to be slightly different, and I'll try to explain a bit the, the, um, the processes that we've put in place uh, to set up the program, select the papers, uh, and so on. Uh, but to start with, um, our, our three days of conferences will have uh, splendid uh, keynote speakers. Um, you see the, the faces and names here. You'll hear uh, much more about this. Uh, it's a single track conference. Everything, every overall session will be uh, happening here in this room. And the posters are all in the same room, so it's, it's very convenient uh, to get all the papers uh, on track. We'll have uh, 19 long orals. So these were selected uh, from the full paper sets. 
We also have uh, 28 uh, spotlight talks. So these are short three minute talks without questions. Uh, and, and thanks to these long orals and uh, spotlights, actually all the full papers uh, that were accepted to the conference uh, will be presented uh, here on, on stage. Uh, so this would be a, a great opportunity for you to choose the posters uh, that you want to see uh, in, in more depth. So in addition to that, we'll have uh, 105, we, we've accepted 105 extended abstracts, uh, all of them uh, being presented as, as posters. So in total, uh, you'll have 157 uh, uh, posters. Uh, these are split into several oral sessions and, and three poster sessions, as you'll find in, in your booklets. Uh, in terms of, of review process, um, so we, we received uh, a, a very good number of, of 117 uh, full paper submissions. So we didn't have a, a restricted uh, page number, but we were uh, giving advice, uh, not strong guidelines on, on not to extend too much uh, to, uh, to keep the paper uh, suitable for, for proper review process. Out of these uh, 117 papers, 47 uh, got accepted, and as I said, so 19 orals, uh, 28 posters, all of these 28 posters being presented, uh, again, as spotlight uh, orals. Uh, so that leads us to an acceptance rate of, of about 40%, uh, so which, which is good. Uh, it allows us to get a good number of posters and still be uh, quite selective, so we're very happy with, with, with this. And the quality of the paper, as you'll see, uh, is, is quite amazing. Um, so how did we review all these uh, full paper submissions? Uh, so we had, uh, we tried to get exactly three reviews uh, per papers, and then things happened a little bit, so we had between three and four uh, reviews per, per papers. Uh, we had area chairs uh, bid on papers to choose which one they would uh, oversee. Um, then the, the um, the reviewer assignment was actually uh, done automatically through the open review pr uh, process, um, but then uh, area chairs were able to, to fine tune uh, before deploying the, the papers. Okay, and, and then what we, what we did was ask uh, all the area chairs not to re-review, but really just to provide a summary of the reviews from the reviewers and, and provide, um, uh, provide also um, a, a proposition whether to accept or, or reject the paper. Uh, once uh, this was done, uh, we gathered a paper selection committee um, composed by the, the program chairs and also the three of us program ch uh, general chairs, and we reviewed uh, all, the, uh, all the meta reviews um, and the rankings uh, to decide on, on basically where to put the threshold and how to assign uh, different papers to, um, to different categories, uh, orals or, or, um, uh, or spotlight talks. Uh, so how this went, so uh, we also went through an early accept and early reject phase uh, to avoid having too many discussions on all the papers. Uh, so we had uh, about uh, a third of the papers early accepted, a third early uh, rejected, and then, um, uh, well, a much bigger third actually, uh, looking at the borderline papers and discussing these. Uh, so you can see that interestingly we had a quite a two-mode uh, distribution in, in the scores, which facilitated uh, the discussion quite uh, uh, well, which was a good facilitator. Um, so for the extended abstracts, so these were shorter papers, uh, so three-page uh, uh, papers. We had a more lightweight uh, review process, but nonetheless uh, sufficiently in-depth. Uh, in the sense that, uh, well, um, our acceptance rate was still uh, around 66%. We had uh, at least two reviewers uh, for each of the papers, uh, but we didn't have the, the area chair. So really, we, we took the, the average from the, from the reviewers and, and put a threshold uh, based on the, um, the, the reviews uh, directly. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so the program chair and general chairs were really only in charge of, of selecting that, that threshold uh, here. Uh, so with that, I'll really like to thank you the amazing work done by all the area chairs who are listed here. Uh, so maybe we can give them a, a round of applause already. <laughs> Uh, 
similarly, uh, we'll have, we have a, a very good uh, pool of reviewers. Uh, all were invited uh, based on this, um, uh, the recommendations from the, from the ACs. Uh, and we had only to do minor uh, uh, tweaks, maybe to uh, add a little more here and there, uh, but that's about it. Uh, but again, so here you'll see the, the whole list of reviewers who helped uh, really make the scientific success of this conference. So again, another round of applause for the reviewers. Please. Um, well, and so we run a bit of analysis on the topics of the papers. You'll see them here. Um, not surprisingly, you'll see segmentation um, quite heavily represented and learning as well, uh, deep and images, which is fine. We're in a deep learning and medical imaging conference. Uh, and just, uh, so how did we run things also slightly differently? So we decided uh, to, uh, to be as open uh, as possible in our uh, review and publication process. So all the reviews I've just been discussing have been made uh, available uh, as soon as possible after the, the decision uh, on the open review uh, process and the discussion uh, could happen there. Uh, all the papers are in open access uh, on, on open review. We then also uh, worked on making uh, the final uh, publications, so the camera-ready ones, uh, into the proceedings of machine learning research. So this is volume uh, 102, uh, which is also open access, uh, and, and you get access to all the full uh, papers. The extended abstracts uh, are, uh, for now, only, open, um, only available uh, with an open review. Um, which, uh, which is good. We are trying to get another compendium, but that, that's probably for next year. Um, out of the full papers, uh, we, uh, we selected uh, some of the best ranking ones uh, to invite them for a special issue uh, in medical image analysis, and, and the process for, for this uh, is still ongoing. So hopefully, uh, next year, uh, at the next conference, we'll get uh, this special issue um, available to you for you to read. So if you have any questions or any feedback, uh, we're very happy to hear it. Again, this is a very young conference uh, still, and we're still uh, exploring the, the, the model. Uh, but really, the, the, our, one of the key goals is to be, again, as open as possible. And, and uh, so again, suggestions are, are very welcome to how to improve or, uh, the, the process uh, going forward. Okay, uh, so one of the other things, uh, I said we're trying to be slightly different as well. Uh, so one of the things we decided to do was actually also uh, go through uh, a best paper award and announce it at the very beginning of the conference so that we give more exposure to uh, what the reviewers and, and uh, the committee thought were some of the best papers. Uh, so for that, I'll let Hervé uh, present uh, it. So, uh, Eugenio Iglesias, Marlene De Bruyne, and myself, Hervé Lombard, uh, we had this difficulty, uh, this difficult uh, task of finding the very best uh, paper. Um, so, out of the, uh, uh, so that you can imagine that involves a lot of reading, a lot of communications, and so on. Um, so, we had a process basically on, based on originality, methodological innovation, uh, clinical value as well, impact of the paper. So all those are, are uh, aspects that we really wanted to emphasize. Uh, we selected uh, or we shortlisted a few papers. Uh, out of the 19 uh, uh, papers presented orally here, uh, again, you can imagine that involves a lot of reading and a lot of uh, communications in behind. So out of those 19 papers, we selected, uh, we shortlisted uh, uh, five of them uh, here. Uh, so from those five, uh, uh, five uh, short hit listed here. Uh, we had to, again, communicate, uh, argument, and, and, and find the very best ones. Uh, so some of you, or probably all of you actually, uh, from the five here is in the room. Um, so those are the five uh, that we wanted. Uh, out of those five, we selected two runner-ups, so almost best papers. Uh, so for the very first uh, uh, runner-up, uh, so that's the best uh, 
paper runner-up. <laughs> um, so equally, uh, we selected two runner-ups, and this is the first uh, one, equally to the second one. So those certificates will be given, handed out on the, the closing ceremony on Wednesday. Uh, so the first one is Tian Xia on uh, pathology factorization. If I remember correctly, this is presented Tuesday afternoon. So this is uh, Tuesday afternoon. The second runner-up, uh, Hoel Kervadek as well. So this one will be on boundary losses. Uh, this one will be presented this afternoon as well. Uh, so now comes the, uh, so those are the two runner-ups, all sponsored, by the way, by current technologies. Um, so for the very best paper award. <laughs> so this is the very, very, so that's the one uh, we had to. <laughs> this one actually, all of uh, the three of us, we actually, uh, uh, we all agreed it was an obvious one for us. Uh, so for the best, uh, the best paper award, this is the one. So Vincent Adriatic. So this one is in, uh, on uh, rotation invariant uh, CNNs, and this will be presented. This is, a, in fact, by completed random chances. This is the very first paper presented right after the keynote of uh, Michael. Um, so again, the certificates will be handed out uh, on Wednesday on the very uh, closing ceremonies. Uh, there will also, as well be a poster, uh, best paper uh, poster one, uh, presented on, on the closing ceremony as well. Uh, so with this, I hand off uh, to, to Ben.